So uh, before the uh, lightning talk uh, of our uh, activities, we have a few, about 10 minutes. So I would like to uh, uh, tell about uh, some overview of the DDCLS. And uh, again, my name is Susan Goto from DDCLS. And uh, I joined DDCLS uh, this year. So I actually I'm not I'm the most inappropriate person to to introduce the DBCS, but uh, uh, I like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity. <laughs> it's not a complaint, but uh, <laughs> I just thank you. So the the history of the uh, DBCS, this is a uh, already mentioned by. Months. And the DBCLS has been established in 2007. Uh, April 2007, and the, uh, this is the uh, same fiscal year of the Biohackathon series started. And the, uh, at the time, the director was uh, Professor Toshita Sakami. And uh, I uh, this morning I met uh, uh, Sakuma Keiko-san uh, from NBDC and she told me that the, she had uh, some pictures of the 10 years ago uh, at the event. So I uh, received the picture of the Professor Takagi and the, mm, it's uh, almost the same as uh, <laughs> this morning's session of uh, Starry Sensei. Like uh, uh, his unchanging uh, support of the Biohackathon series, I think. And the, but, but of course, we have a, a lot of more activities and changing activities, like uh, uh explained the morning session for the Biohackathon series. But we also uh, organized some uh, hackathon series, like uh, starting in 2010. We started the uh, Biohackathon series in Japanese for uh, for expanding the uh, Biohackathon series in the Japanese uh, bioinformatics uh, biology uh, research field. And the, from the 2014, we had uh, two other summits. And also from 2015, we had a, a biomedical link documentation for the uh, uh, literature annotation uh, hackathon. So we have uh, uh, several uh, hackathon series. And after the uh, in 2011, GST uh, NVDC has been established, and uh, as Professor uh, Kohara said, uh, again, the Sakai Sensei was the director of this NVDC. Uh, and the from here, I think the uh, semantic web application has been accelerated in this series. So we have uh, several uh, related topics of the uh, series. The first, we started a Spartan series from uh, 2012, which is currently held in once a month to gather the many bioinformatics so a database for biology related person uh, to to create the RDF data and use the RDF data. And the, in 2013, the Togo Genome has been started, and also the, the one of the uh, big results outcome is the NVDC RDF portal, which will be uh, explained by Kawashima san. Uh, uh, next. So this is a brief history of the, I mean, this is not all, but uh, uh, selected history of the DBCLS. And the, the DBCLS is collaborated with NVDC, which is uh, also the funding agency, but uh, we have a collaboration. And the, the DBCLS is also the, the, in the same institute, the ROIS, with the DDBJ, which is a uh, DNA sequence database center, 
And the, actually, the current director of the DDBJ is also the Takagi sensei. So, <laughs> so uh, if he said the uh, biohackathon series will continue, maybe we can we we can for the continuous of the biohackathon series. So the, the mission of the DDCS is uh, to create the data, uh, to data to have a to make the data and knowledge integration for the uh, many uh, research. Uh, areas like the biological, biochemical, biomedical research area, and also we want to uh, pro provide the data and knowledge for the data scientists and data, and uh, collect the data from the data providers. And using the currently that we are using the semantic web technology like the RTF and link token data, uh, based on the fair principles. And we mainly focus on the databases developed in Japan, but uh, we also create uh, using uh, international databases to connect uh, to those databases. And the, another thing we are handling is uh, big data from the NGS or omics projects. And also we are uh, using the literature information to extract the knowledge and annotate the knowledge uh, for this uh, full text and after the abstract. So to but we, use, we create these databases for, to support the web-based tools and the API for the uh, biologists or other uh, pro programming developers or bulk download service for the, uh, for the data scientists and our diff data creation for the data providers. And the, this is a bit, uh, uh, sorry for the very busy uh, picture, but uh, we we would like to, we are going to create uh, this uh, big data uh, center to collect the uh, data from the Japan and other, as well as the international database and uh, provide some uh, middleware and application uh, layer for providing the, this data for the data scientists, data application developer, and end users. So the, today's talk will be a uh, uh, we have uh, eight talks, and the the first four talks are related to the RDF Spark group um, part. So the, we would like to create a big data core. So uh, this RDF Spark group part will be covered. Uh, will be covered. Will cover the data conversion to RDF, the ontology development and interface for creating an interface for the Spark group endpoint like uh, this application has been already developed. And you can access these from this uh, URL. And the second part is for the NGS and omics data. So we have a uh, NGS data standard and analysis and expression data catalogs. And we also created several uh, tools uh, from the same URL. And the third one is uh, literature annotation. So we would like to uh, collect the uh, knowledge from the data, uh, from the literature. And uh, we also develop some literature contents, including a Japanese uh, content and the natural language query answering system. So this is a current member of the DBCLS, and uh, some of them are going to introduce uh, their activities uh, from uh, so uh, Hello, uh, I'm Shuichi Kawashima from DBCRS. So in this talk, I would like to uh, introduce uh, our NBDC RDF portal. Um, NBDC RDF portal is a collection of RDF datasets de developed by uh, database research groups in Japan. And it was launched in uh, 2015. And uh, it, this service is similar to uh, EBI RDF platform. And 
it also pro uh, this service provides uh, RD files download service and uh, Sparkle endpoint to the RDF data centers. So in this slide, uh, I'd, I'd like to uh, talk about the background of uh, the development of this RDF portal. So NBD, NBDC, uh, uh, which is uh, the organizing institute of this hackathon, uh, have fu uh, founded uh, many uh, database uh, provider in Japan. And also uh, NBDC also uh, encourage these uh, encourage these groups uh, to publish their data in RDF. So, uh, so these so these research groups uh, started to create uh, RDF datasets. So then uh, we uh, we recognize. Uh, we need uh, a centralized uh, RDF resource service like uh, EBI RDF platform uh, because uh, so so if uh, if such uh, service available uh, user uh, e uh, so RDF data uh, user uh, easily uh, find the uh, uh, RDF data and access the uh, access such RDF data set. And so uh, that is reason why we have developed uh, the NBDC RDF portal. So and um, uh, one of the good point uh, of RDF data set in this portal is uh, all uh, datasets uh, are reviewed uh, by NBDC uh, based on uh, a guideline uh, we we make. So to explain the guideline, uh, I like to introduce uh, other hackathon event. Uh, the NBCLS, uh, other than by hackathon, DBCLS have organized. Another uh, monthly hackathon event named Sparklezone. Uh, and since uh, October 2012, uh, uh, we organized 59 times hackathon event. And in this event, uh, uh, through this event, uh, we, uh, we gained a lot of knowledge uh, to to create uh, good RDF data. So we have compiled such knowledge uh, as a guideline. And this is the, uh, our guide, uh, RDF Finding Database Guidelines. I'm sorry, in Jap it, this is in Japanese. And in this guideline, uh, for example, uh, we require to use identified.org URIs when referring external resources. And in another example, we require to use some properties for some purposes. And uh, I think following this guideline uh, enhance uh, interoperability of RDF write data. And this is the current statistics of NVDC RDF portals. Uh, in this portal, uh, there are 17, 19, hmm? I'm sorry, uh, 17 RDF datasets. And the total number of tolipers uh, is over uh, 14 uh, billion tolipers. And uh, uh, now uh, we are working on registering a newly developed DDBJ RDF. Thank you. <laughs> Talk about the 
again, I also have a model from database data for us. Yes, and I'm talking about the program as suite. So uh, there are issues in this uh, database domain life science. And uh, as you know, uh, lots of other data sets have been released in the science domain, like uh, all we already know the Uniprot, Pumpkin, Mesh, Ensemble, and Five to Oh, this is a uh, Old version, it's okay. <laughs> 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 okay. And also, you know, the more data has to come. And so, there are some difficulties for users. Uh, for users, they are difficult to find a spark endpoint, which is easy to learn its data structure. So, if you want to query using a spark, you have to know previously that what the class is and what the relationship was and what the predicate is. So, it's not so easy. And also, uh, you have to find which data source or which endpoint is reliable or stable. And also, uh, you have to check uh, if there are the identical data sets in multiple endpoints, you have to check which one is better or up to date. And also, uh, there are different difficult for providers uh, to increase usefulness by uh, making appropriate metadata. So, uh, not all of the data provider know well about void or service descriptions. And also, um, uh, what the way to make your data findable. And also, uh, you have to um, have some difficulty to following linked data principles. Um, some of you already know about uh, linked data principles. It's uh, uh, created by Tiffany and Dean. And so you have to make uh, your URI uh, differentiable, and also you have to make some URI to link other data sets, and so on. Okay, and so this is the goal. Uh, and we need a place where provider and the user communicate with each other. So our solution is to provide forums by using GitHub issue features. So you can post on the uh, your comments or questions uh, once you get a GitHub uh, account. And also, we need a place where you can find highly reliable data. So our solution is here. It uh, scores each endpoint in terms of several uh, aspects. And also provide an endpoint search service by URI or scores and other some properties. And also provide an overview of its data structure. So which, uh, what the class relationship and what kind of uh, probability predicate or ontology that endpoint uses or, and so on. And also ensure transparency by showing our scoring um, log and so on. And uh, here the one score we are now proposing. So our scoring measures in terms of six aspects. One is availability, so it's how long it is up and running by months. And also it's uh, freshness, so how new it, the data set is, and its operation, its operation where it provides a VOID or a, and service descriptions, and that kind of metadata of the data source. Also, the usefulness, it's uh, how well it uses common vocabularies. So, uh, as you know, you can use any other data and any ontologies that you can develop, but if you use a more common ontologies, it, data can be useful. And also its validity, how well it follows the linked data principles. Then and also performance, it's very important. Uh, how fast it, you can get the answer by uh, issuing a Spark query. So here the image one well, suite. And so the for providers, you can uh, find some uh, it wants to be uh, used by, by more users. And also by using the metadata, you can learn how to provide metadata one. No, well, no, you are user, what the user can imagine, or what kind of user wants to use your data. And also, for users, uh, user wants the data when needed. And by using your data, uh, you can find reliable stable endpoints easily. So here's the URL, so you can access this service. Uh, and also, it's a Maca viewer we are providing. It's a, a viewer of the endpoint data structure. It's, it's a kind of interactive design and interactive user interface. You can click easy. Each sample uh, 
represent each class of the data set. And if you click the circle, you can drill down to the more uh, <laughs> specific class, and so on. So thank you very much. <laughs> Building the mm -hmm. um, I'm Atsuko Yamaguchi from the DBCRS, and I, I would like to talk about the Road Surfer, which is a search tool based on plus plus relationships on Road. And what we want to do through Road Surfer project is um, to develop a search system. Um, from load and if user uh, uh, whose input is user data and output is a related fragment uh, related to the user's input. As our as our previous work, uh, we developed Sparkle Builder, which is which assist um, which assist in writing Sparkle, Sparkle query. Just by selecting two classes, you can obtain related data between the two classes from that by generating a Sparkle query based on plus plus relationship. And currently, 73 data set in lifecycle domain are supported. However, our goal is not writing Sparkle query, but, but extract data from that according to user's interest. And Sparkle Builder supports Sparkle query for only one Sparkle endpoint. So we started to load server project to develop a tool to extract the data from load from uh, or two or more endpoint in a flexible manner. To realize um, as a I would like to introduce our overview of Road Surfer. Um, in advance, crawler got metadata, um, will get metadata from data for data set and endpoint. And uh, for, uh, if you uh, in, uh, input an instance of a class, so um, Road Surfer API um, generates a Sparkle query, um, maybe a federated query, and uh, some uh, and the query cut um, part of the part of load and uh, outputs the related fragment to user. And what I would like, I would like to do at Bio Hackathon 17 for Load Surfer, and our goal is um, prototype implementation of Load Surfer. Towards the goal, we are going to do several things, but I would like to focus, focus this time design and implementation of Load Surfer API layer. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Next, Chiba-san will talk about Spark, which is a command line in the case of the uh, Spark Korean combination of Spark query. I am Hiroka Chiba from DBCNS, and uh, I will introduce Span, a command line Sparkle client for generating and reusing queries. Uh, this is a simple example of Span commands which uses uh, Sparkle shortcuts. So, in this case, um, the target uh, Sparkle endpoint is uh, input is specified uh, as a, a URL or in alias, and uh, the following uh, part is Sparkle shortcut, which generates Sparkle query internally, and the result can be obtained in the standard output in the uh, have separated values uh, by default, but you can change the formats. And there are uh, many other options that can work as a 
Spiker shortcuts, but uh, uh, Spiker shortcuts cannot cover complicated queries. So uh, Spike can uh, execute arbitrary Spiker query, and uh, the query can be parameterized, and uh, the, this parameterized mechanism uh, make the, the query more uh, more useful. And uh, furthermore, you can combine uh, several Sparkle queries uh, through Unix pipe. And in, in this example, the first query searches for uh, all sorgas proteins of a specified uh, protein. And the obtained list of proteins is uh, passed to the second query to obtain more information. And uh, the list of proteins uh, uh, embedded in, this, in, in the values clause in the, the second Sparkle query to pass the binding to pass the bindings between the queries. So in this way, uh, two uh, distributed endpoints can be combined through a Unix pipe. So uh, um, uh, any uh, comments or feedbacks are welcome. Thank you. Thanks a lot of time to talk about the standardization of the experimental uh, metadata. Um, hi everyone, uh, my slide is a bit smaller, but uh, I think it's okay. So, um, I'm Tazaro from Derivative Center for Life Science, and I'm going to talk about the standardization of the experimental protocols, which is um, which came out from this uh, the hackathon series. Um, so it's about the reproducibility, and the rich, which is not about the the sequence reader kind, which photosensei uh, introduced, but the uh, so usually I'm working on the on the chip seek and the RNA seek there, but uh, this time and in this hackathon I'm going to work with for you know improving the reproducibility of this uh, biological science. So um, everyone loves reproducibility, and everyone knows it's important and it's a right thing for science. But the problem is that the people are still talking about the reproducibility. So this is a slide from the 2013 keynote of the ISMB by Professor Cal Gobble. And uh, yet still, uh, we're always talking about the reproducibility because it's, you know, it's not easy to achieve the, the fully reproducible science. So the fundamental problem is about, uh, about the reproducibility is that the, the people are doing science. So the people will make mistakes, uh, will got, got some errors. So we want to automate everything. So, so we, we want to remove the, the humanity from the scientific procedures. So, um, so that's why we are working on the experimental protocols project uh, during the hackathon. So, uh, so experimental protocols. So if we want to automate the, the biological experiment, so protocols should be the, in a machine readable format and uh, without ambiguity. And uh, thank you. And uh, um, the protocol should be executable by both machines and humans. So, um, so far, what we did uh, during the back since uh, 2014, and uh, the members, uh, Jean-Luc, Alex, Alex there, and Olga, uh, Eric there, and me. Uh, unfortunately, Jean-Luc and Olga couldn't make it to this Hackton, but so uh, we have been discussing and uh, developing the, the link to the model for the experimental protocols. And uh, the populating the example data of the structured experimental protocols. And we also did some correlation with the uh, RBI, which is the Robotic Biology in, uh, Institute, I think so, and uh, which is the company in Tokyo developing the biological experimental automation robot. And uh, we have published the, the paper uh, titled the Robotic Crowd Biology with Mahalo Lovejoy, which is a very uh, cool idea that uh, we 
uh, use uh, multiple robots with two arms and you know, creating the workflows uh, of the experimental protocols and the, the people just uh, swallow the experimental protocols and then the experiment, uh, biological experiments were executed on in the crowd. So um, what we want to do during the biohack uh, this time is to brush up the model and uh, personally uh, I, I want to uh, proceed uh, my project which is uh, creating the, the markdown based template for the experimental protocols in which it can be combined to the length data and, uh, and then the ultimate goal of this project is to enable the the, the kind of the workflow from the physical biological sample to artful figure in one click. So to achieve that, is we we should we need to connect the biological experimental uh, procedure to data analysis pipeline, uh, such as the common workflow language, uh, which I think the Alex will talk about this tomorrow. Uh, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> so um. Basically, that's it. And uh, the finally, uh, let me introduce the team Pythagor Galaxy, which is the, which is not about the experimental protocol, but it's also about the reproducibility of the data analysis environment. So these people are going to attend the hackathon, and we will work on the, the data analysis pipeline reproducibility using the Galaxy or Common Workflow language or something like that. So if you're interested, in, uh, just join us to work on work for the, you know, I didn't know. Science. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, Bolo Sam will talk about the uh, city facilitating the use of public high throughput sequencing and data for input research. Hi. I'm. One moment. <laughs> Much rather than the fish, yeah, so uh, please. Such my name, uh, but uh, uh, I do hit on YouTube now. YouTube is too long, but uh, uh, this is my name. No, so much. Thank you. Hi. Yes. Thank you. Um, uh, my my presentation is uh, my my other talk is uh, about uh, concerning the um, um, the use of public high throughput sequencing data, genomic research, and. Uh, this is a general introduction. I think it's no need for you. And this is uh, also uh, included in the Goto san's presentation. The, I'm from uh, Mishima, and uh, I'm uh, in uh, Mishima DBCLS, and uh, we, we are the neighbor to the DDBJ, and we are co-working co uh, in the Mishima uh, NIG campus. And um, I'm talking uh, um, NGS data uh, at Mishima, and uh, this is a uh, uh, View from our lab laboratory, not laboratory. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. And uh, we are collaborating <laughs> with uh, uh, DDBJ, and uh, we have a uh, sequence data. In, uh, we have, uh, you, you have an uh, NSRE, and uh, these are stored in a uh, sequence read archive survey. This is also uh, residing in the NIG campus, the DDB is a supercomputer. And uh, we, we have one, and we made an uh, index for that, and uh, uh, we collecting uh, uh, metadata uh, by the uh, huge effort by uh, uh, Tazuro and Takeru. And they, are, uh, they will uh, also uh, hack for that in uh, coming biohackathon for the DBS SRA. And, for me, uh, I'm I'm also doing uh, uh, some part for that, but uh, I'm I'm mainly tackling uh, uh, omics uh, data archive uh, because uh, it is because uh, uh, DDBJ is now trying to uh, make uh, such an uh, archive uh, called the DDBJ omics archive DOR now. So and I want to make uh, uh, the same uh, similar uh, index for that for the DOR. And uh, I'm, I'm now uh, making a system for, uh, for, mm -hmm. the, for that such uh, called uh, all of gene expression uh, called AOE, AOE. We, we call this 
for the AOI. So now this is DBCSS introduction. I think it's no need to, you know, this is a, a paper for, uh, by Tazuro. Uh, this is just published in Giga Science. And, uh, this is a uh, sequence in the SRA. I'm sorry. And uh, this is a, a, a under construction web page for the Omics archive. So, uh, is now, uh, the system is now, uh, uh, now, now we are <laughs> tapping this one. But uh, this is uh, only the announcement for we will do, do so. And uh, this is a prototype of uh, a current version of AOE, and uh, this is all of the gene expression. Uh, the, currently, uh, AOE is an uh, 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 index for the RA Express. Uh, the, because uh, DOR is uh, now, now trying to uh, collaborate with the uh, RA Express team, and uh, we, I think uh, uh, DOR will be the part of, um, part of RA Express. So uh, this is very good for me to, uh, uh, to expand uh, our AOE to uh, DOR. And the DOR can um, search uh, data from uh, clicking the organism part or some other uh, feature, uh, for example, the uh, uh, illuminaries and other leads. Uh, you can uh, have a, uh, such a graph, graph presentation in the, in the website. And you can limit the entries and uh, you can retrieve the, all the data like, uh, like this table. So, as, yeah, and our service is uh, accessible from the uh, DBCS website. Or that. And uh, we also have a, a present uh, instruction a movie in, uh, called Togo TV, from, uh, also available from uh, our website, also in the English version. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll talk about making ah, interesting resource with data. Ah, so. <coughs> Hello, um, my name is Kim, and uh, I will be introducing two services uh, from DBCS. Uh, One is Power Notation, which is uh, a repository of literature annotation, and second one is uh, Rodka, which is a natural linking interface to a uh, Sparky endpoint. Uh, so, uh, we are dealing with uh, many uh, databases, many scientific databases, but there is also one scientific literature, which I would say uh, one of the largest, biggest knowledge base, and um, uh, it is almost the only uh, resource which preserves uh, the context of knowledge pieces, uh, but the content is not uh, structured. So this idea of linking uh, literature with data uh, has been around for quite a few uh, years, and uh, there have been, and there are many uh, projects for annotating uh, the entire PubMed, PubMed and uh, the full articles uh, uh, in uh, PubMed Central. And, um, so there are many uh, projects to produce uh, annotations. And uh, PubMed annotation is a repository of those uh, uh, annotation uh, data sets. Uh, so it collects uh, annotation data sets from different projects. And um, it's a public repository, so anyone can submit uh, their uh, annotation data set and it currently has um, uh, almost uh, 20, uh, almost 200 annotation data sets uh, but uh, many of them actually are just created for testing purposes but uh, at least uh, 40 of them are uh, kind of seriously uh, produced and um, um, there are more uh, under production. And uh, this is one example of annotation data sets which was submitted actually uh, last night uh, by Toyo Fumi, who is the next speaker. Uh, so it is uh, annotation to PubMed with all the terms. And uh, so the all the terms are annotated with uh, all the uh, IDs. And um, because um, Pub annotation is a repository of many annotation data sets, some abstracts are included in more than one project. So, uh, for example, this abstract is included uh, many 
uh, allocation projects. If you see actually, if you see the actual allocation, it's allocation from Odo, it's allocation from actually Uber allocation, it's allocation from um, syntactic uh, dependency. And um, if uh, these annotation data sets are collected in, uh, in one uh, place, we can use them uh, together. So, for example, we can search for um, all of the terms that are directly, that have direct syntactic connection uh, with Luberon uh, terms. Uh, so, this uh, power annotation and it's uh, Map of allocations in public locations, so you can see it's uh, uh, mass terms, and um, the, the dark column is um, the area is um, heavily updated. There are also a lot of and uh, in the end, I would like to show you a demo of this another project, uh, Rodka, which is a natural language uh, query interface. Uh, you can submit a natural language uh, query uh, and this system will produce actually uh, many uh, Sparkle queries and uh, you will retrieve the result by executing those uh, Sparkle. What is happening in background is um, the system produces many Sparkle queries from this natural language uh, query and um, it will get results from uh, those uh, queries and actually you can see the sparkle. This is the sparkle automatically produced by Rodka. Uh, for example, uh, these results were uh, retrieved through this uh, IDF graph. So, um, uh, if you are interested in uh, using this uh, natural language uh, interface to your Sparkle endpoint, uh, I'm happy to uh, collaborate with you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Tony Fujiwara. Uh, today we introduce PubCase Finder. Uh, that is a diagnosis assistant system for rare disease. Uh, when user input phenotypes of a patient, uh, like this. So, uh, PubCase Finder calculates the phenotype similarity between patient phenotypes and rare disease phenotypes, and shows a ranking of rare diseases based on the phenotypic uh, scores. So, and uh, also, user can search for case reports based on patient features. So, we think PubCase Finder is very useful for differential diagnosis. But uh, we have very limited data to utilize to develop such a system as PubCase Finder because uh, many diseases are very rare. So it is not easy to correct the data. An example, in orphanet, rare diseases are annotated with phenotypes. But, um, however, orphanet annotation is limited due to the process of manual curation. So currently, only one third of rare diseases in orphanet have phenotype annotation. For example, there is no annotation in Wagner disease so PubCase Finder cannot cal calculate phenotype similarities between patient phenotypes and the Wagner disease phenotypes. So our challenge is to extract disease phenotype associations from case reports in Medline. A case report is very useful for reporting unknown symptoms and drug side effects quickly. There are more than 1 million case reports in Medline, so, um, those are those have been increasing. So we employed a text mining approach to extract their diseases and the phenotypes from case reports and associate them with each other. Result, uh, in addition to 52,000 associations literally from Orphanet, 
we could extract 70,000 associations from case reports. So to integrate these two associations, uh, 2,000 of rare disease in point are annotated. So uh, publicists, uh, we could add the Wagner disease to such target of publicist finder. In this hackathon, uh, we would like to share our annotation and provide the search function of publicist finder. So we have already uploaded the, our annotation to pub annotation and toggle DB. Also, we will provide the search function uh, of Publicist Finder by REST API and uh, Docker. Also, uh, we will evaluate the performance of Publicist Finder by using cases in Phenom Syndrome. If you need more detailed information, uh, please read the summary of Publicist Finder from this link. Thank you very much.